Hi, I have a challenge for flat earthers, but globers feel free to take it up as well. The challenge is uh, the following. I choose a location and then you find it based on the elevations of three stars, which I will take from Stellarium, and the time. This will also be shown in Stellarium. So I'll show multiple sets of data at the end of the video. You can choose a set and calculate the location corresponding to the set using your method of choice. So for flat earthers, uh, I guess you will do some kind of a triangulation, or ex at least I expect that, and use some right triangles, because that's what you are saying for a long time now, that celestial navigation uses right triangles, so I'll, I can't wait to see what exactly you're doing there. And then show the result so that we can check if the location is correct and show your calculations that you did to arrive at the result. I don't want the challenge to be so that I am posting datasets and you are solving for the location. I want you to be able to challenge me as well and maybe other globers. So how to post your challenge so that you can post some data and I will find the location. First choose a location and time. So that is simple enough. You need to pretty much choose anything, any place on Earth and any time. Then choose three bright stars that are in the Nautical Almanac. You can find the Almanac here on the nauticalalmanac.com. You just select the year and you select whether you want the compact or normal size. Choose the normal size to see the full data set that is in the Almanac. Then we go. I will just show you where to find which stars are in the almanac, so then we scroll to pretty much any date. And here is the list of stars, so choose three bright stars that are visible from your chosen location at the chosen time and are on, the, on this list. So the next step is to take the elevations of the selected stars from Stellarium. And at this step also take screenshots to prove later that you used actual data, that is, that Stellarium actually showed this elevation for your chosen location and time. I will show you an example. So here's what it looks like in Stellarium, and I'm actually showing you a screenshot because for some reason I can't record Stellarium directly. So I chose the star Vega, my location is shown here in this window location, my date and time are shown here. Ah, uh, make sure to pause the simulation uh, beforehand, although you don't really have to even. If the times are different for each star, that's fine as well, but then remember to publish the time uh, for every star separately. But if you want just a single time, then pause the simulation. And then we can read the altitude of the star from the data here. So for Vega, at this, at this location and at this moment, we have altitude. So elevation is called, al called altitude here, and it's 28 degrees, 53 minutes, 12.4 seconds. So then we choose two more stars. I chose Deneb, we have altitude here, and Polaris, and we have altitude here. Now, oh, one more thing, uh, the time usually you should tell it in UTC, so this is actually my local time, and that will be so for any location on Earth, if you want to find the time in UTC. Here at the bottom you can see what the time zone is. So my time zone is UTC plus one, so if it's 18.33 then in UTC it's 17.33. So post the UTC time and not your local time. Okay, next step. Add the screenshots to a zip archive so that all the screenshots will be in a single file and calculate the zips SHA1 hash. So this step might seem a bit weird, but it's actually the idea is actually quite simple. So you want to be able to prove that your data is correct and that you chose it beforehand. So the hash allows you to do that. You can then publish this hash, and that's the next step, publish the elevations, time, and the hash of the zip. So you can publish this hash without revealing any information whatsoever about the screenshots. We will not know what the location is, but then after we calculate the, the location, you can publish the zip archive and we can check that the zip archive hashes to the correct hash so that you can prove that the zip archive actually contains the screenshots you use and then you used and then we can check if the location matches the location in the screenshots. So basically publishing this hash is a way to prove 
that whether the result that someone obtained from your data is correct without revealing any of the data before they actually calculate it. So that's why the step is necessary. So I'll show you now how to do it. To calculate the hash, you can use this website. I will post the link in the description of the video. It's very simple. You just click the drop file here, choose the file, the zip with the screenshots. This location one.zip is a zip file that contains the three screenshots of Vega, Deneb and Polaris. And once you click open, the hash appears here. So that is what you should publish along with your data, with elevations of the stars and time, that, so that we can later check that you didn't lie about the location and about the elevations. So this is what the example would look like. Vega elevation 28 degrees, etc. Then up elevation 50 degrees, etc. Polaris elevation 52, etc time this and this, hash, uh, the hash of the uh, zip file, and based on this you should be able to calculate the location and find out that it was Warsaw, Poland, and then when, when you publish your result that it is Warsaw, Poland, I can publish the archive, the zip file corresponding to the hash, you can check that it indeed corresponds to the hash by calculating it again on the website so that you know that this is the zip file I prepared before the challenge and, and not some other one. And you can check on the screenshots that indeed there were these elevations and that it was Warsaw, Poland and that your result is correct. If you calculate something else, you will see on the screenshots that it was actually Warsaw, Poland and that your resu result is incorrect. So that's the example. So let's go to the actual challenge locations. This is the first challenge location. The stars I chose are Al Qaeda, Capella, and Alvard, with the elevations shown here. The time was 17th of December again, but I changed the hour to 10:35 UTC. And you see the hash of the archive. I won't publish the archive yet. When you, when you actually, when someone actually solves the challenge and posts the location, I will publish the archive so that you can check whether the result is correct. The second challenge location, you have three stars, Betelgeuse, Canopus and Akernar. Again, elevations are shown, time is again shown, and the hash. So, calculate the location. And the third one, Divda, Hamal and Alferats with the elevations as shown. The time, now pay attention because it's not December, I chose to rewind the time to August 12th of this year. And again, there is the hash, so that you will be able to check later that I did indeed use the location I'm claiming to have used, and you will be able to check if your result is correct. So, yeah, that's it from me. I challenge everyone, especially flat earthers, to calculate the challenge locations and to tell me where I took the measurements from. But Globers are also welcome to do so, and I especially encourage everyone to post their own challenges, their own star elevations with times and hashes, and again, especially flat earthers, so that we Globers can demonstrate to you that we are able to calculate the location based on such data. So if some flat earther wishes to post uh, their data, please do so, please tell me. I will calculate the location and I will tell you what I got from my calculations. You will then publish your archive and we will compare whether I was correct or not. Okay, thanks. Uh, again, everyone is invited to participate in the challenge. This should be good fun. Hopefully some people participate and we will be able to, to have some fun. So thanks for your attention and yeah, see you the next time and hopefully see you when we discuss some of the challenge results. Bye.